And welcome along again, everybody. Later, we're going to take a look at a bunch of TV series box sets and some of the great films you can catch at no extra cost in my prime. And we'll also take a look at some of the latest big screen movies that you can catch on demand. But first, since it's just around the corner, let's kind of catch up on some of the films that you can see right now, which are all about Christmas or remind you of Christmas or just basically have Christmas in the background. Like, for instance, Serendipity, where John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale bump into each other during the Christmas season at Bloomingdale's in New York. They bond over ice cream at a famous New York restaurant which shares the same title as the movie. They say goodbye, they both realise that they left something behind and, well, wouldn't you just know it? They meet each other again. Kate takes the whole kind of uh, exchanging phone numbers bit to a whole new level. As in, kind of, you know, if we're meant to be together, let fate decide. As in, in other words, serendipity. What the hell was that? But that $5 bill makes its way back into my hands. I'll be able to call you. And when you hear my voice on the other end, then you'll believe in fate, won't you? There it is, serendipity. It's fluffy, it's lightweight, it's charming, and it's very romantic. And it's Christmas, as is Willy Wonka, the fantasy comedy that so many people associate with Christmas. For fans of Roald Dahl's original black comedy, Gene Wilder is the properly enigmatic sweets manufacturer who hides five golden tickets in his confectionery so the lucky winners can secure a lifelong supply of sweet things and a free tour of the Wonka factory. Hold your breath. Make a wish. Count to three. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. Yes, Gene Wilder and Willy Wonka in the supernatural parable of Christmas Carol, Jim Carrey as Ebenezer Scrooge is haunted on all sides by the ghosts of Christmas past, present and yet to come. Haunt me no longer! Jim Carrey as Scrooge in full flight. Here's train conductor Tom Hanks in full flight, or in full runaway train mode, I should say, in the motion capture extravaganza, The Polar Express, as he takes a bunch of kids on a journey of self-discovery to meet Santa at the North Pole. Is everything all right? What do we do? Well, considering the fact that we have lost communication with the engineer, we are standing totally exposed on the front of the locomotive, the train appears to be accelerating uncontrollably, and we are rapidly approaching Glacier Gulch, which just happens to be the steepest downhill grade in the world. I suggest we all hold on tightly! Yes, the Polar Express with Tom Hanks, who plays five roles in the film, including jolly old Saint Nick himself. Speaking of Santa Claus, in a movie of that title, Tim Allen, who you might know best as Buzz Lightyear, he plays the white-bearded sleigh-riding present giver as an advertising executive who gets roped into becoming the new Santa Claus in this playful and inventive 1994 action-adventure fantasy comedy. When the movie came out, I met him. Was this supposed to be a much darker movie than it turned out? I mean, four or five years ago, was it a really... Sort of horrible movie about Christmas. Yes, it was. Not darker. It, it would, um, it would have been. Um, I'm trying to think of how to say it. I mean, just in in a quickly, he broke his neck falling off. The, I mean, and it was, <laughs> the it was, and it was a snap. I mean, he fell off. I actually, I actually forced him to fall because I took a couple shots at him because I thought he was up on the roof yeah. robbing me. I, you know, this is, and he fell and. The, it made me laugh out loud reading it because here my kid comes on. I actually have killed Santa Claus and I read his card and we decided that probably isn't a good way to start a holiday film, you know, breaking Santa's neck. You know, you, you got to you got to know when to pull your punches. So we softened it quite a bit and actually I think made it a much sweeter film you know, because he waves and that he doesn't die just for the kids. You know, he doesn't die. He's a transformation. It's a magic thing. Santa's lasts for about five to eight hundred years. This is the story. And then the elves will look for a man that needs to find his soul. A, need a, a man that needs to find the child within him. He's having a little trouble in his life. 
Then they go to the, the existing Santa and say, would you like to go back to the man you used to be? And he has to make a decision, yes. And then the Santa goes to another right, man. Right. You should just stay still. What am I doing in here? Now let's take a sample of my prime films that you can watch right now. Sling Blade is a 90s movie that never got the recognition it deserved. It's directed by Billy Bob Thornton. He also takes the lead role as a middle-aged man released from a mental institution back to the community of his boyhood. The result is a subtle, understated, atmospheric slice of Southern States of America gothic drama. It ain't got no gas in it. Finding a friendship he never had. My name's Frank Wheatley. What's your name? Carl's my name. Who's that strange looking man behind you? That's Carl. I met him at the laundry mat. Nice to meet you, Carl. And a family he has always wanted. Mama said you can stay over with us. I like the way you talk. Well, I like the way you talk. Just how retarded are you? Stop it, though. Mama has a boyfriend. He threatened to kill her if she ever left him. And you're gonna learn to live with my rules. Doyle is a monster. I'm gonna kill you dead in a doornail. That's Billy Bob Thornton in Sling Blade. Now, Kevin Spacey stars in The Shipping News as a man who relocates to a small coastal town in Newfoundland to banish some private demons, solve a few dark family mysteries, and find something good with a lone single mother, played by Julianne Moore. We need somebody to cover the shipping news. We need a reporter. Find him the centre of your story, the beating heart of it. That's what makes a reporter. What do you see? Tell me the headline. Horizon fills with dark clouds. Imminent storm threatens village. But what if no storm comes? The lead spared from deadly storm. The story of a man who discovers the most extraordinary tale of all. I'm Wavy Prowse. I run the place. Yeah, that's the shipping news, the sort of touching journey of self-discovery. And Judy Dench, by the way, she stars in that one as well. Now, Jackie Brown is not usually mentioned in the same breath as other more instantly familiar Quentin Tarantino movies, but it should be. At over two hours plus, it's a stuffed, stylish, stimulating, money-smuggling crime thriller which stars Samuel L. Jackson, Robert De Niro, Michael Keaton and Bridget Fonda. But the film really belongs to Robert Foster and Pam Greer. Who is this? The Delphonics. It's nice. Mm -hmm. I called in sick today. As far as the airline knows, I'm still available. Are you? I don't know. I'm going to go and talk with Nicolette and Dargis today. I'm going to do what you suggested. Offer to help and see what happens. What I meant was to have a lawyer do the negotiating for you. No, I, I want to talk to them first. I know more now about Ordeal's money. Well, if it's the ATF guy that wants you, that'll only interest him up to a point. I know, but it's a lot of money. It's a half a million dollars, all in Cabo. And, and more coming in. How'd you find that out? Ordeal told me last night. He called? He came by. What'd you do? We talked. Do you think he still trusts you? Yeah, it is doubts at first, but he's always trusted me. Yeah, that's Jackie Brown. Now, Rabbit Proof Fence, it tells the compelling true life story of the ethnic cleansing and relocation of Aboriginals in Australia in the 1930s. Under the safe hand of director Philip Noyce, it's a compelling true life story brilliantly told of courage, endurance and injustice. That country over there, that's woman country. You can't go there, you get big trouble. Yeah, I Where your country? My country. Down south. Long way from here. Our dad works there on your rabbit fence. Yeah? How far does rabbit fence go to? Rabbit proof fence? Goes all the way to the sea down that way. Right to the top of Australia. Longest fence in the world. And all the way to the sea down that way. 1,500 miles long. Keeps the rabbits on that side of the fence. Keeps the farmland on this side of the fence. And finally in this batch of My Prime movies, it's a brilliant performance from Daniel Day-Lewis. The only man in cinema history to win three Best Actor Oscars. The first and third were My Left Foot and Lincoln, but it's the second one we're looking at here. 
buying wealth and power by selling his soul, Daniel plays a guy called Daniel, and he's bonkers. Well, actually, he's a trailblazing oil pioneer, admirable in so many ways, monstrous and loathsome in so many more. I want you to look over there. Daniel, let me introduce... Look over there, you see? That's my son. You see him? Yes. You see him? I see him. Don't tell me how to raise my family. I told you not to tell me how to raise my family. Daniel. So what do you see? I'm very happy for you that... Yes, I made a deal with Union. My son is happy. He's safe. Congratulations. I'm taking care of him now, so... Excellent. You look like a fool, don't you, Tilford? Yes. Yes. Yes, you do. Excuse me, gentlemen. Oh, excuse me, gentlemen. Excuse him, gentlemen. Now let's count down the top five big screen movies available right now on demand. At number five, an updating of the 1980s tale of a family whose suburban home is haunted by unfriendly ghosts, or more accurately, evil forces. Sam Rockwell is the dad at his wit's end. So who are you gonna call? That's right, Ghostbuster and occult specialist, Carrigan Burke, played by Richard Harris's son, Jared Harris. I, I want you to tell me a little bit about Maddie. D did you ever feel that she was a, a little bit off? Off? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, how do you mean off? You know, did you ever hear her talking to things that weren't there? Yeah, well, she has imaginary friends, but that's normal. I think what he's trying to say is that Maddie might have been born with a gift. That's not the word I'd use, but all right. You mean she can talk to ghosts? She's six years old. Which means that her life force is at its purest, without judgment or cynicism. Why do you think they reached out to her in the first place? They didn't reach out to any of you. You keep saying they. Where, who, who are they? Well, now, Brooke tells me that this development was built on a cemetery. Yes, Poltergeist, the disaster action flick San Andreas is all about calamity, mayhem, bombast and destruction as Dwayne Johnson fights to save his family and California. Here he tackles the biggest wave you've ever seen. No problem to the rock. That's San Andreas. Now, Hot Shots, Johnny English, Austin Powers, Get Smart, Spy Hard, Armand Flint, even Carry On Spying, and a barrel load of others. I'm talking the James Bond rip-off, the spy spoof movie. The latest, and one of the most successful, it made over $100 million at the US box office alone over the past summer. Its director, Paul Feig, teams up once again with the star of The Heat and Bridesmaids, that's the irrepressible Melissa McCarthy, who plays a desk-bound CIA analyst forced to go deep undercover and, well, Save the world, actually. Spy. I quit teaching and joined the CIA. I thought I was going to be this amazing spy, and I'm still just the same boring person I was. You play it too safe. I just hear my mom's voice. Just blend in, let somebody else win. Making a wave isn't always brave. Brilliant. Give up on your dreams, Susan. Just to write that in my lunchbox. We've intercepted chatter that Rayana Boyanov knows where that nuke is. She knows the identity of all our agents. We need someone to find the bomb without being detected, but it can't be any of you. We need someone invisible. I'll do it. 
Uh, okay. Thanks, lunch lady. I'm serious. Don't let me down, Cooper. I will not. I will let you up. Stop talking. I will let you up. And at the top is the drama and unconventional biopic Love and Mercy. The story of Brian Wilson, the man behind the era-defining music of the Beach Boys. In the 60s, he's played by Paul Dano, in the 80s by John Cusack. Despite the recovery of recent decades, emotionally, Wilson's moving torture journey will drain you. It's a very good movie. No, this is not fun. Not the music, not the lyrics. Now, it's not all bad, don't get me wrong, but it's not Beach Boys fun. Well, and we had hits. We had lots why of hits. Are we arguing right now? There's not why one hit on this album, guys. I don't care how many car horns and bicycle bells and jingle jangle or whatever you put in there, they're not going to buy something depressing like that. Depressing? Even the happy songs are sad. We need to write some of the old stuff again, fellas. That's the all I'm saying. The old stuff is old. So we'll make it new again. I can't go back in time. We're not surfers. We never have been. And real surfers don't dig our music anyway. They don't. Okay, I can't write about the summer and fun and summer and summer and fun and cars. I got different stuff inside me. I gotta get it out. Jeez, oh, would you listen to yourself? You gotta get it out. Who are you, Mozart? Everyone shut up. Carl, play it again. It's a new creative bag. Oh, we gotta shit. keep growing. None of these guys have played one single note on the entire album. It's like you're making your own record with our voices, Brian. What Dennis played? A little bit, Carl, too. A little bit. For crying out loud, would you listen to yourself? First, you wanted to stop toying with us, and we accepted that. That's fine. Bruce is doing great. But now, it's like we're barely a part of the Brian Wilson band. You can't just do whatever the hell you want, Brian. Now let's take a look at a few interesting series and box sets, some of them may be buried away in your extensive list of at no extra cost my prime stuff. 192 is a Canadian police drama series which focuses on the lives of several fictional patrol officers in Montreal. Calm down, man. We'll handle this. Let us handle this. Relax, please. Hey, hey, ma'am. Let us handle this. Let us handle this, ma'am. Please stop. And from cops in Canada to cops in the UK and BBC Two's most watched drama series of the past 10 years. Line of Duty is a police procedural drama whose plot in the first series revolves around an anti-corruption unit. What's the guards? Good to go. Yeah. Sure. That's Line of Duty, and from the UK, the series Sarangoon Road takes us to Singapore and the mid-1960s, and a tumultuous time in the island's history, with the imminent breakaway from Malaysia on the horizon. Main character Dan Hanny plays an Australian businessman living in Singapore in this ten-part series. My husband was murdered on your streets. Nothing has been done about it. I have a job for you. So what, you want me to find out who killed him? Bob Bill says you fought with the Brits in the Malay emergency. And before that, you were in Chang as a kid. Yeah, you know I love chicken rice. You still live in a world where the white hats win and the black hats lose. Wake up, Callahan. You can't win this. I can't help you. 
And from Malaysia to Belgium this time, the 12-part series Salamander starts with the robbery of 66 safety deposit boxes in a small private bank in Brussels. The victims are members of a secret organisation of the country's moneyed elite, politicians and bankers and industrialists. And this shady mob certainly doesn't want their intricate secrets out there. So, with baddies on both sides, an incorruptible old-school police inspector, played by Philip Peters, stands in the middle of the mess. Het is in het belang van uw man dat u zegt waar hij is. Zegt mij dan wie dat je zei. Beschouw ons maar als collega's van uw man. Wat bewijs het dan en toont met uw kaart. 